Well, Andy, I busted out my bright yellow blazer to bring a little you more did? sunshine to this oh, dreary day. That was why? But I do. <laughs> that was a typical I, man. I, Come I, on, Andy. I thought it was for visibility in the snow showers later when I had our way home. <laughs> well, hopefully I won't need that much help you know, to be seen. Yeah, not, there's some coming in off the lakeshore. There'll be more and more. And some slick spots if you're getting closer to the lakeshore because that'll continue. But just the hint that winter's around. So, But, yeah, sunshine's always good. Yellow's always good. Orange. <laughs> Anything that lifts our spirits, because I can't do it. Take a look and see what's going on on the satellite and radar combination. The uh, line of showers raced out of the area through quickly through the afternoon hours. You see that off to the east. Then the lake effect sprinkles. Now it's all cold enough that it's all snow showers. So the further west you live here in mid-Michigan, you're going to see these on again, off again. I wouldn't be surprised that if you looked out from time to time, maybe there's a little white dusting on the rooftop, something like that. They're going to continue on again, off again. And those bands will set up, so they expect some minor accumulations near the lakeshore, especially when you get on the other side of uh, 31. That's sort of the most likely going to be. You take a look at bigger picture. Boy, look at the snow still coming down now in the Upper Peninsula. It's now lake effect up in the Marquette area, where some areas are up to about 28 inches of snowfall. This lake effect will go strong through the overnight period. So if we add in the two systems of uh, today and yesterday and the lake effect, and that's what the weather service up there is doing. It's categorizing it as one winter storm. It may be in their top eight or top seven snowiest storms in the Upper Peninsula since record keeping began, all because of this heavy snow band that went through. For us, it's all lake effect. You see, there's not much to the west. In fact, clouds are breaking apart, and we may see some of that tomorrow, but that stubborn west wind is going to come across that relatively warm water, keep the clouds in place, and the on again, off again snow showers. Our winds turning a little more northwesterly, but then they'll come back to the west tomorrow, but that northwest wind just brings in more cold air, and then we end up with temperatures that are now anywhere about 35, 36. You got 34 at Marshall and Ithaca, and then you got to add that wind in. And our wind chills are now in the mid 20s. They will be in the upper, upper teens. I've said it before, but make sure the kids are prepared. You got to have the gloves, the hat, a whole thing tomorrow because the last couple of mornings we've been in the mid to upper 50s to start off our day. It will not be anywhere close to that in the windshield department starting tomorrow. You look at the high temperatures today. This is the morning readings in the mid to upper 50s, some low 60s, and the temperatures that we have now are the lows for the day. So there's a lot of cold air here. Teens, single digits, all coming in on that northwest flow. We are lucky to be on this side of the lake when it comes to moderating those temperatures a little bit, but it also means it produces clouds and on again, off again, snow showers. The 24-hour uh, temperature change, 24 hours ago, it was 14 degrees warmer in Lansing, 18 warmer in Charlotte. Yeah, we all knew that. We were in the 50s, not any longer, and temperatures are going to keep falling this week. So here's the satellite radar and look at all the lake effect snow bands. We're going to get some good bands across the Leonov Peninsula tomorrow off to the north as down here and of course the UP as well. Very typical when you get this amount of cold air this early in the season. The cold weather has gone all the way down to the south now. Texas, there's that front and it's pretty chilly across the center part of the U.S. and the eastern two-thirds of the nation continue to cool down the next couple of days. You look at what's going on up north and then we go through our daytime tomorrow. There will be some snow showers that will come inland. Nothing big enough really to worry too much about other than maybe an occasional slick spot. I worry more about Thursday morning. There's a disturbance that enhances those showers and our way to work or school may be enough to coat the ground and make the road slick and then it'll be snow showers through the day that may accumulate again in the evening. You see how it kind of flares up again. Not major, but once you be able to put a ruler in it, it's measurable snow. All the cold weather then just sticks right over the top of us. Tonight, 28 degrees. That's what we'll bottom out as. Wind chills about 19. We'll see those snow showers. The winds continue in the morning as well. Through the daytime, only 34. Wind chills mid-20. Our 1-800 Hansen's weather kit is all prepared. And as we talked about, big winter coat and hat. That's Danny. He's age three from a grand ledge. Your seven day outlook continues to keep us in a very cold pattern. Those are all numbers that if I showed you in late December would make more sense than it does right now. Obviously some six weeks ahead of being cold and the readings would get colder towards the tail end of that as well. The lows and the highs Maybe by doing a little ice fishing here next week, but if this keeps up, it's certainly some really <laughs> cold air. It will make every, the ground solid and start freezing up those ponds. But more importantly, I think our furnaces are going to do a lot of overtime work. There's no so doubt. we hope you're ready. Yeah, <laughs> there's no running from it. Most of the nation's cold, so sit back and enjoy. No, or try to enjoy. Try, or try yeah. to stay warm. Yeah. All right, Andy, mm -hmm. thank you.